Let's go ahead and find the surface area of this rectangular box. And can we, uh, we have something here that kind of looks like a shoe box. And then what we want to do, of course, is to find the surface area. So the dimensions is uh, this box is two inches high, three inches wide, and five inches long. So there's actually a uh, formula that you could write uh, to calculate the surface area of this box. But uh, in a lot of ways, it's kind of common sense. So if you forgot the formula, you should still be able to reason through and calculate the surface area if you have a good, solid understanding of what the surface area means. But uh, if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution here in a moment, and then we'll walk through step by step on how to calculate the surface area. And of course, we'll review exactly what the surface area is. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into the surface area, and let me show you the answer. And here you go. All right, so here is our rectangular box, you know, basically like a shoe box. The surface area is 62 inches squared, okay? So if you said 62, I would probably give you a 9 out of a 10. A lot of you might be kind of angry about that. You might be like, hey, what are you talking about? I got the right answer. Well, remember, anytime you're dealing with area uh, or volume or distance, and there's units of measure involved, in this case, we're dealing with inches, you need to be uh, specific about that and put that unit of measure in. So most, uh, most math teachers and science teachers and things, when you're doing this, if you don't put those units of measure in, they will dock you some points. But um, anyways, if you got 62 inches squared, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A+, plus and a 100% nice job, okay? So, you know, I'm not trying to be nitpicky here, but I am trying to tell you, uh, the details that you need to be paying attention to, you know, in mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and just quickly talk about what the surface area means. Okay, let's erase all this so we can stay focused on what I'm trying to teach you here. So what is surface area? Well, effectively, surface area is just uh, the amount of uh, area coverage. It's basically, you can think of it as coverage area. If you wanted to wrap put wrapping paper around this box, uh, what would you need to cover? Well, we, we need to cover this, uh, this side, this side, and uh, this side right here, this side right here, and then the very top and the very bottom, okay? The amount of um, coverage is the surface area. Now, we could kind of think of this, um, if we kind of drew this out this way, we would have our little top, and then we'd have our ends like so, then we would have our little sides, and of course we have another, um, you know, top or bottom, however you want to think about it. But you're going to have all these various parts right here. We have one, two, three, four, five. But remember, we do have another part here. So the six little uh, uh, rectangles that we have to effectively calculate the area and then add up. Okay. So when you're thinking about surface area, um, you're basically thinking about coverage area. All right. How much wrapping paper it would take to uh, wrap something up. And that would be the case with like a cylinder or anything, okay? Just think, all right, here is something I wanna wrap up. I need some wrapping paper right here. I'll need some wrapping paper right here. And then I need some wrapping paper that goes around like that as well. So again, you know, you don't have to have uh, specific formulas for every single little figure that you um, encounter. You just have to have the right concept about what surface area is. Now, in this particular problem, you do need to know that the area of a rectangle is what? Well, any rectangle, it's going to be the length times the width. doesn't make a difference what you're dealing with. Okay, so uh, this is probably the most basic formula that you're going to have to keep in mind in order to figure this out. Now, I did stress that when you're dealing with area, you're always dealing with units of measure squared. Okay, so units of measured squared. So make sure you are dealing with all the same units of measure. So in other words, if this was feet and these were in inches, you have to put everything in the same unit of measure. And then your final answer is going to be in that particular unit of measured squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem now. Uh, now that we understand what surface area is, pretty straightforward stuff. 
let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this box uh, this way. So as I kind of indicated, we're dealing with six sides here, right? So we have an end right here, and then we have another end. We're going to have to find the areas of these. But if you notice here, these ends are the same uh, dimension. So if we look, it's going to be a 2 by 3 uh, little uh, rectangle we have to figure out. This is a 2 by 3 as well. But we have an end and an end right there. And I'm going to erase that. Uh, then we have these sides. So we have a side right here and a side right there. And let's see uh, what the dimensions are of this side. Okay, matter of fact, why don't you tell me what you think uh, the dimensions are? Well, if you look here, it's going to be 5 by what? 5 by 2. Okay, so here is the height. So you remember, this is the height, and then we need this length. So this is going to be a 5 by 2. And then we have the what? Well, we have these tops and bottoms. But again, these are going to be the same uh, dimension. And what would be the dimensions of these things? Well, it would be 3 by 5, right? So we have a 3 by 5 right here and a 3 by 5 down here. So anytime you're dealing with a rectangular um, box, okay, these dimensions are going to be the same. I.e., this is 3 down here, or this is 3, this would be 3 inches as well. This is 5 inches, this would be 5 inches, etc., etc. So uh, that's pretty much just, you know, um, your ability to know what figure you're dealing with and just interpret it and just take your time so you don't get, uh, get confused on the actual dimensions of uh, what we need to figure out here. So let's go ahead and put this all together and uh, write our little formula out. So the total surface area of this rectangular box will be the ends. Okay, we already talked about those right there. So that's going to be a two by three little rectangle. We'll write that right there, two by three. And then we have how many of those? Well, we have two, okay? So we have to take uh, this two by three to get the area, then we'll multiply by two, that will count for the ends. All right, so how about the sides? Again, the sides are gonna be this and this, and this is gonna be a five by what? Five by two, okay? So we have a five by two here, and we have a five by two there, so it's gonna be two, five by two, so this is our sides. And then that leaves us with our uh, top and bottom so it's this one and this one, but again, these are gonna be the same, and this would be a three by five, all right? So we have three by five and we have two of those. Now all we have to do is do the number crunching, and this uh, doesn't even require a calculator. So two by three is six, or two times three, excuse me. <laughs> this could be interpreted as two by three. This is two times three, so uh, two times six, we'll figure that out in a second. Two times five times two is 10, so we'll figure that out. And then two times three times five is 15. Now you see how I'm writing everything out here step by step. This is exactly how you want to show your teacher, you know, what you, uh, the basically your solution. You just don't want to just come up with a final number because they don't, they want to see the story being told. They want to be like, oh, this person knows exactly what they're doing. And even if you make a little uh, uh, arithmetic error or even something on a unit of measure, you're going to get um, the majority of points. Okay, remember math really is uh, in terms of getting a grade or being in a class where you do get some sort of grade out of it. It's a game of partial credit. Okay, don't think in terms of pass fail or right or wrong. It's really like how much do you understand? If you can prove to your teacher that you understand a good amount of what's going on, they're going to give you a good amount of points. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and put this all together. So here we have 12, this would be 20. And 2 times 15 is 30, and all together, that's 62. Uh, but remember, at the end of all this calculations, we are dealing with inches, and we are dealing with, of course, area or surface area. So 62 inches squared. Okay, so not that difficult of a problem, and um, uh, one that if you're taking any sort of algebra, you know, basically even like middle school, high school, uh, you know, surface area problems could be in algebra courses. It's not just like, yeah, we are talking about geometry, but, you know, you're, you're going to see this uh, type of problem in all various sorts of tests, quizzes, and various math classes, okay? So it's very important that you understand surface area, area, and volume, and other type of units of measure problems, okay? All right, so hopefully this video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need additional help with anything like surface area, like the surface area, of a prism or things like that, I would um, uh, direct you to uh, towards two courses in my math help program. Uh, one would be pre-algebra. I have a nice um, uh, chapter on all uh, basic area, volume, surface area that goes over that. And then, of course, my geometry course, my full geometry course, I get into that and more advanced stuff. 
All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.